Welcome back to the program, Psychophants. As promised, um, I'm going to do a, uh, another automotive market climate video here. Just as I promised in the last video, if you, if you watched the last one, when I talked about the Bring a Trailer auction, I was looking at an E24 M6. I told you I'd do a market climate update on the um, BMW E24 M6. And I'm going to try to do this again with my um, tablet here. We're just kind of going to do the same format that we did. If you remember, we did the uh, Toyota Land Cruiser and the Porsche 928 S4. So we'll kind of just go through the same sort of process and uh, talk you through it. Let's see if this is a good buy right now. Let's see if it's still a good time to get in on an E24. Okay, I'll just run a few pictures up here of, a, of an E24. Why, I, I guess we should start off with, with just the basics here. Why are we looking at an E24 M6 to begin with? Well, as I've been saying in some of the other videos, I think the, the general market climate right now for 1980s German metal is really good. I think that's the hot stuff. Now, obviously, some of the stuff is just gone crazy, like air-cooled 911s. The time to get into those was <laughs> two, three, five, ten years ago. If you're looking for early long hood 911s, it was you know ten years ago. If you're looking to get in on 993s, 964s, 3.2 Carreras, 930s, and stuff, you're you're too late, buddy. You're just way too late. You're you're going to pay the premium. Should have gotten in while the getting was good. But 80s German metal in general, I think is really strong right now for, for a number of reasons. And I've said this in a few other videos, it, the, the days of normally aspirated engines are over and they're not coming back. Um, inline sixes, V8s, that type of stuff. It, everything now has just gone supercharging and turbocharging and hybrids. BMW has done it, Porsche has done it, and they really don't have a choice. All the cafe standards, have really forced them to bring up their their EPA, their gas mileage or emission stuff to be in compliance. And one of the ways to do that to do that is to make smaller engines with more horsepower. And obviously they're doing other things to make that happen too to get to those standards. They're lightening the cars, they're making the cars more streamlined and aerodynamic. They're using composite materials or more aluminum. You know, sometimes on the really high expensive stuff they're using carbon fiber and magnesium and all kinds of sort of space age materials in order to get the weight down to get better gas mileage. Because you, know, you can make an engine smaller, which is great, and that will uh, make the car lighter, and that'll give you be better gas mileage. Put turbochargers, superchargers, and all that stuff on it, and you're good to go. So the days of you know, normally aspirated engines just aren't coming back. So that's why I think the 80s cars are really good, especially the German cars, Audi, BMW, Porsche, Mercedes, um, it was really sort of a, a um, high watermark for automobile manufacturing. And really, if you look at it too, it was really sort of the, the last part of the hand build age. Cars are just almost assembly line production stuff now, but just at the tail end of the 80s, early 90s, a lot of those cars, in many cases, um, were still handmade, at least many parts of them. Were. So that's why I think they're, they're good basic cars to start with, whether you're looking at an E24 M6 or a Porsche or an Audi, whatever it is, I think that's where you want to be. Um, I'm not sure there's any other place in the market you want to be right now. Japanese cars, American cars, British cars, I think it's the German 80s cars. And they were just built to such a high standard back then, I don't think we're going to get to that uh, anytime soon again. So. That's why we're focus, focusing on the, on the M6 here. So just some basics here. Let's run through the uh, general basics of the E24, and I got it up here on my screen here. So I'll walk you through it. Um, basically, the, the E24 M6 was made from November 86 to September 1988. And I think just a few of the late September cars or just late cars built in 88 may have been actually Venda's 89s. I'm not sure how many 89s there were. I don't think there were that many for the American market. So the 88s tend to be generally the last cars. Uh, 17, uh, 1767 total produced in North America. So it's a really small number when you think about it. Only 1,700 cars. 
135 went to Canada, so now we're down to about 1,600. So over three years, three and a half years, 1,600 cars is not a lot. Now, if you're like me and you go to car shows and that stuff, it seems like every German car show you go to has got an M6. So we, you and I kind of see them all the time, but really if you're out driving around on the street, you hardly ever see one. Um, you might see a 635, you might see an L, what is it, an L6 or L7. That was sort of the luxury version of the 635. Um, but you don't see many M6s. Uh, the, the bodies, the, 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 the internals, all the gizzards were, were still manufactured by BMW. Um, the bodies were built by Carmen. Obviously, Carmen is a big name in Europe. They did bodies for Porsche, VW, and stuff. So um, that should be familiar to you. 256 horses uh, in the States. I think it was higher in Europe. Again, catalytic converters and all that stuff. Uh, Five-speed manual. These cars pretty much came with all the options you could want on, at least for North American cars. Uh, we got heated front seats as an only option, I think, on, a, on the USA cars. And the rear air conditioner was standard. Now, I think for Canada, that was reversed. Obviously, colder climate. So the heated seats there were standard, and the rear AC was optional. But really, other than that, that was the only option you could get. Now, obviously, you could custom, you know, they had different exterior and interior colors. So you could um, pick whatever you wanted there. But overall, you pretty much got what you got. Um, the cars built after 87, June 87, those are the ones that got the, um, in the USA, those are the ones with the shorter bumpers, sort of the Euro bumpers. The, the uh, pre June 87 cars have those kind of bigger, steel bumpers that stick out more. They kind of remind you of the, the, those big bumpers on the 325s, uh, and then those big ass bumpers you see on Mercedes back then, Mercedes um, in that same time period. So I think you probably want a shorter bumper car because I think they look better, but if you find a good 87, obviously go for it. Um, and then obviously, just the, the rest of the world really called it, it's the M635 CSI. Same car pretty much. Um, they, we just called it M6 here. Um, there were a few minor changes and stuff for Europe. Uh, they have different standards and stuff, different um, standard features, I think, were offered on the car. But all in all, 99% the same car. Um, let's look at now, next slide. Here's where the, where the market has been. Here's where it is now, and here's where it may be going. We did the same slide on the 928. Um, and this is sort of the last 10 years or so. If you can... See, at the very beginning, going back to 2006, September, it was about $22,000. That's what the, and this is a car in excellent condition. It's, there's like four grades from Hagerty, and that's where I'm pulling these numbers from. Uh, so this is like the second best grade. So I figure that's a good car, very good car, show and shine car, people's choice car, not necessarily Pebble Beach though. So 22,000 back in 06, as you can see all the way through about 2014 it's pretty steady it's not going anywhere okay and then in 2014 it went from 24 up to 29 and then it leveled out for a little bit and then in 2015 it went from 29 up into the 30s and then in the last year or so it's actually gone up into the 40s so yeah in a perfect world as i tell you if you want to get in at rock bottom according to the chart we should have got into this car three years ago, uh, in January 2014. But if we had done that, we would have had no indication that it was going up because we would have gotten in before there was any signs of it going up. So I don't like to do that because that is pure speculation. So I want to see a little bit of an uptick before I get into them just to be reassured that that's where the market's going. Now, I probably would have rather have gotten in about a year ago, um, all things being equal when it was in the 30s, because you can see in the last year or so, it's gone up another almost $10,000. But in the last two years, it's gone up $14,800, which is a lot of money. If you look back in 2014, the car was 24,000. So if you go from 24 and you go up to another 14, it's gone up, I don't know, what is that, 65% or so, almost 70% of its value. It's increased in the last two or three years. <laughs> that is really good. That is really strong. So. It's obviously headed in the right direction. Now the question is, are we, are we early? Are we 
right where we should be in terms of getting into one of these cars, or are we too late? As the as as the prices have the prices gotten so far up, where there's not going to be as much equity to get out of it if we get in now and have to sell later. Well, let's look at the next slide. Okay, here's generally let's. What this slide's telling us is how does the M6 compare to the other M cars of the same period? So if you look at the M6 today and compare it to the M3 and the M5, the M3 back in 88, we're using 88 cars here for all of them. The M3 sold for 34,000 brand new. That was base MSRP. The M5 sold for 46.5 and the M6 for 55.9. So the M6 was the flagship. It was the Mac Daddy, the most expensive one. Now, where are these cars today? Well, the M3 now is in a, in a grade two condition is almost $80,000. Uh, I just, it almost breaks my heart to say that because about six or seven years ago when I saw my 944 Turbo, a guy wanted to trade me straight up his M3, my turbo, same number of miles, same condition, it had like 65, 70,000 miles on it. And I turned them down because I didn't want to trade for a slower car. Um, and then I sold my 944 turbo a couple years later for like $15,000. Gee, wouldn't I like to have that deal back? Um, but you know, who, who knew back then that the, the M3 prices were gonna go crazy? So if we look at the M5s, they sold for 46.5 new, and now the grade twos are about 58.9 uh, in 2017. And now the M6, here's sort of the outlier, the odd duck out of all of them. It sold for 55.9 back in 1988, but it's the, the grade two is still only 44.6. So of the three, it's the only one, number one, that's still selling for less than what, what the original MSRP was. And number two, the difference is kind of dramatic. Uh, obviously far more dramatic with the M3 than the M5. But what it's telling you is there's still probably some upside in the M6, especially since the M6 was the most expensive of all the M cars back then. So it had something going for it. You had to have some money. I mean, when you walked into a dealership in 1988, with, with, no matter which M car you were buying, you walk in and buy an M6, you had to be somebody, okay? You're throwing down $56,000 on a brand new car in 1988. I mean, that's an expensive car now. But, you know, what is it, 90, oh, wait, 25 years ago, that was some serious change, almost 30 years ago, serious change. So let's look now at the next slide. Here's sort of the delta. This, sort of, this just encapsulates what we're talking about. The difference between the price in 88 and the price now. Well, for the M3, um, you're in the black, $45,900. So you're doing really good. Um, you're on the plus side of MSRP, which is where you want to be if you already own the car. If you're trying to get in a car now, that's not where you want to be. You don't want to be buying now. It's too late. Um, the N5, 12400 is the value now above original MSRP. Now, compared to the M6, the M6 is still 11300 behind MSRP. Now, I like to get in at half of MSRP, okay? So if the car sold for 60, I went in for 30. If the car sold for 50, I went in for 25. To me, that is sort of, at least for like German cars, luxury cars, that kind of seems to be where the nice bottom is, um, where you're getting in early enough where there's still a good number of cars that you can pick and choose from to get a good one, but you're still at the point where you've got a lot of upside later on to get your money back. So obviously, again, the M6 is the outlier here. Um, let's look at the next slide here. Okay, let's look at the comparison now between production numbers. E30 M3, they built 5,115. Now this is just for the USA market only. Uh, the E28 M5, 1239 units. E24 M6, they sent us 1,632, and that's removing the Canadian ones. So again, Build a lot more M3s. The really the more fair comparison here is between M5 and M6. Obviously, the M5 prices are way higher now than MSRP. The, the M6s are not, but there's still about the same number of cars floating out there. I mean, who knows how many have been wrecked and wrapped around telephone poles and tracked and are just so roached out you would never want one and they're not really worth anything. So those numbers are probably much further below 
1239 and 1632, but still, it's a really good indication of how well the E25, E20 M5 is done. And I think the E24 M6's day is gonna come. Um, it's just a matter of when. Um, I think you still have time to get in, but I think that gap, the window is closing on it. I think in the next year or two, it's probably gonna be over and done with, and you're gonna have to look for a different car to get into. Now, you know, if you just, if you don't follow this channel that much and you just have crazy money and it's burning a hole in your wallet, you can buy whatever you want. You go out there and buy it high, buy it low, it doesn't matter. But for people who follow my channel, we're tight wads, and so we try to get the most bang for our buck. Now, if you remember, we did kind of the same uh, market climate update on the 928S4. So I thought just for grins, just for fun, let's kind of compare the E24 M6 to the 928S4. I mean, I know they're not quite the same kind of cars. Yeah, they're sort of GT cars, but the S4, the Porsche, is really more performance car than the uh, M6. The M6 is more sort of your businessman's, you know, vast amounts of territory all in a single bound, so to speak, you know, where the, where the 928S4, it can do that, but it's, it's more sporty. It's going to go around the corners better. Still, you had to have a lot of money back then to buy either one. So, again, uh, the E24 M6, brand new, 55.9, it's worth 44.6 now. The 928S4 was 66.7 back then in the same year, and then it's kind of hovering in 31.4 range right now. I, that might be a little bit low. I think to get a good one, you're probably closer to 35. But when you compare these two cars, I think what it's really telling you is there's probably a little bit more upside in the, in the 928 right now. You've got a little bit of a better deal going for you. Not that if you don't look hard enough, you can't find a really good M6 deal. And if you can, great, get into it now. I mean, there's no reason, nothing saying you can't get into both. And in a, in a perfect world, if you can afford an M6 and a 928S4 now, and you can get them at a decent price, put your money in both, I think you're gonna be good. Um, but like anything, buy what you like, buy what you want. Don't buy it just because you think it's gonna go up in value. Buy something because it's just a cool car, you've always wanted it, you've lusted after it. And if you buy it for X amount of dollars now and you, you need a kidney transplant and you gotta sell it two years later and you can just get out of it what you got into it, that's still a win, you're still good to go. So the appreciation potential that we're talking about here and I talk about in all these videos, that's the bonus part of this whole thing, okay? So if you can, you know, we're just trying to kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, buy cool cars that you like, which is great, but why not buy cool cars that you like that have a chance to actually build some equity for you? Seems like if you can do both at the same time, you wanna do that. So that's sort of the just, you know, the, I, we, this is a very broad sketch of the E24 M6. We can go into it in much more detail, but I just thought I'd throw this out there for you. Um, I think it's, you know, it's still a good car to get into, uh, but the gap, the, the window is closing on it. Um, in a perfect world, we should have been in it about 12 to 18 months ago. Keep out there looking on the internet, Craigslist. You, you just, you never know where you're gonna find a good one. They can pop up anywhere just because, you know, the, the forums, those are good places to find them. Sometimes the, the place where you least expect to find them is where you find the best car. Because a lot of times, people who own these cars, they're not real internet savvy and all that stuff. They're owned by some 65 year old. He had it as a second or third car. He's an insurance salesman or whatever. He doesn't really understand the internet. So his grandson or his son's trying to help him and you know, you just, you never know. So sometimes you can find a really good one. by Some guy has a garage queen and he just puts it in some Craigslist ad or something like that, and boom, you get on it for everybody else, and you're in good shape. So there you go. Um, if you have any questions about this video, just put them in the comments. I don't pretend to be an E24 M6 um, expert by any means, so if I said anything that's incorrect, um, erroneous, just put them in the comments, correct me on them, and uh, we'll go from there. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, I know what to tell you. Um, share this video on your Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that social media bullshit. And if you haven't subscribed today, subscribe so you never miss an episode. Take care.